Hello, everybody, and welcome to Derail Valley Simulator. Now, Derail Valley is a game that I used to play on the Oculus a lot. It's a VR game, but you can play it in 2D as well. It's a train simulator, and the new update that recently came out called Simulator, as the update, uh, has added a ton of new features. It's currently early morning, getting things prepped for the day. I'm going to show you some more stuff about Derail. It is currently 3 in the morning, and no, that is not a cuckoo clock going off right now. That is the bird outside uh, as we are in our room. You can sleep in the bed uh, if you want to advance time. Uh, however, I already ate up all my sleep, so I can't do that right now. Walking down the hallway, we have some other uh, rooms in here, just different offices and stuff. We're in the main station right now, just outside of the rail yard. We were out earlier in there. Um, but in here, you can see the map of Derail Valley, all the different cities. This is, uh, you know, Food and Factor we're at currently. Um, and then you have a lot of rail to explore. And this game has got a mixture of a job simulator slash train simulator slash life simulator, you name it. Uh, you can waste a lot of time in here. This tells you the whole industry how everything works everything has its own uh world behind it basically so each town has different products that are available to it uh and this is how it all works and then down here with the new update is the weather forecast here uh and we can see it's gonna be a beautiful day starting at 6 a.m going through the nighttime so another new thing to derail valley is that there is a day and night cycle and an entire dynamic weather environment as well coming back inside you can see we have an order validator here these are all your jobs here on the table you have jobs of logistical hauls you can do you have shunting work you can do so if you like to work at the rail yard yes you can do it you can make pretty decent money doing it however the big money later comes down the road with uh multiple jobs and logistical hauls and hazmat and you name it so coming over here to the career manager you can see just in the stats right now this is what i currently have 72 grand uh, put that away accidentally 72 grand and uh, zero orders currently right now copay remaining yes you have to pay your insurance and the more licenses you unlock the higher that is going to go and the more uh, you know locomotives that you're going to be able to drive obviously the insurance would go up on it if we go to the fees you can see right here I have no fees right now to pay but if I did that's where I would go to do it going down here to licenses have a look here at what I currently have I have train driver freight haul shunting I don't have the multiple unit yet. That's only 30 grand to get, but I wanted to save up a little money for the steam engines later down the road. Uh, and then we have uh, manual service, which I own so I can work on the trains myself. Saves you some money. Saves you 50% off, actually. Uh, logistical haul. I own that one. The DE2, that's the default uh, loco you're going to get in the beginning, and you're going to be in DE2 hell, I call it, for a long time. But my new baby is the DH4 you saw earlier on. However... Keep in mind right here, these are the two steam engines. This S060 is not in the game yet. Uh, I accidentally bought that license thing and it was the S282. And then you can see the difference in money there. I just didn't have enough money for it. So <laughs> keep that in mind. And you have all these different licenses you can own. Hazmat all the way up to military level. Pretty darn cool. While we are waiting for the sun to come up and it's just about there. Look at that moon right there and very nice. Uh, I will show you some of the newer things that they added to the sim, and that is uh, the new handbrake systems, not only in the locomotive, but also out here on the cars. You can move this thing around. Uh, that's to release the brake, and that sets it again. And then underneath here, you can actually pull that if you want to remove all the air out of there. So pretty darn cool, uh, the simulation that's going on here behind the scenes. Just a lot of stuff happening here. So you have to manually couple and decouple cars. I'll show you what that looks like. You just kind of spin that guy right there, put the brake lines together and open these things to allow the air to flow uh, through the entire brake pipe. You hear the sound of it right there. So that's actually how you would couple it all up. Pretty darn cool. We'll kill that since we just brought this thing into town. We're not going to be doing that right now. Uncouple you move you and uh, take you off the whole thing there we go so keep in mind i'm playing in realistic mode that allows me to get basically double the money for the jobs however you don't get a lot of the amenities that you would have in the simpler versions of the game you know as far as the difficulty levels go i can't just uh hopscotch around now you have dashing you know because it's a it's a vr game so you're gonna have to dash but uh this one really limits where you can dash to uh, when you're on realistic mode 
and you can't use the external camera views using the F keys, uh, unfortunately. And uh, let's open up our door here and get up here into the actual locomotive and show you around here in the DH4. Love this thing to death. It is a fantastic one. Um, and I'll just show you the whole procedure as we walk in here. So we have the breakers, open that up. We get the electrics on, we get the starter on. We'll close that guy. There's that new handbrake I was talking about that's uh, been added to these. Um, and then we can just start it up. Got to hold that button down and she fires right up. Go to the uh, cab lights or you can go all the way. So you can have the cab light on in here as well when you're doing night operations. Pretty darn cool. You have your front lights and your rear lights. The rear lights, I'm going to go to the full red position in the back. However, you could just crank those things straight up. And look at that. You got a lot of light spilling out the back. It doesn't look looks kind of strange there like that. But in the front, we can go lights on, lights on. There's normal lights and then full blast. Look at the volumetric lighting. Very cool. That wasn't a thing before, so that's why it's pretty neat. You know, you have your wipers. There's no rain currently right now, so it's going to make a racket when we use it. But you do have working wipers and you have a sander to throw that sand down there to help you get traction if you need to on the rails so these brakes are off you have a dynamic brake in this bad boy you have a horn you can open windows it gets louder and close those windows and open the door same thing like that let's remove that handbrake right there and we're going to be ready to go now the bell in this thing is a car horn sounding bell but we're not going to use it <laughs> obviously reverser goes to forward right here and we're just gonna get a little bit of power Get this thing rolling away from that load we just brought in from my stream last night. You can open the doors. You can come over here. You can hit E, lean out. It's really helpful when you're doing shunting work like that. Uh, let's go ahead and kill that. Let's put our locomotive brake on. And you can hear the sounds of that. And look at this. Just what an incredible simulation, man. It really is good. So we will get some... Work going here in just a few moments. Just waiting for that sun to come up so I can show you the daytime. Nighttime, it's just a little too dark, you know? So that's the reason why I have it set the way I do. Reverser there. Uh, this is, you know, your train brake. So if we had that brake pipe going all the way back through those cars, that's how we would stop them. But the sounds are really good and very immersive. We'll put that thing on there to kill the engine. Fuel cut off. There you go. Cabin lights can come off and get the lights off completely there. And then uh, back here. You know, obviously you would set your handbrake and then we would go boom boom close this guy and that's pretty much how you shut it down So it's just past nine o'clock in the morning and the weatherman lied to us. As we can see over here, we are getting some rain until about now. And then it is going to clear up at noon. So you can just see how dynamic and how realistic the weather system is in this sim. I absolutely love it. So let's get us a job. Our DH4 is currently facing to the north. So we could probably just go out this way. If we wanted to take a run down to the harbor, we could easily do that. Um, but let's see what options we actually have here. This one's cat food, and uh, it's going to Harbor in Town. 15,346 plus the bonus, uh, 240 tons. Now, the DH4 can take a little over 600, so I'm not worried about that in any way. 21 grand for this one, but you have to have a hazmat license for that. Might be worth buying just for that reason. And as you can see, hazmat one is 40 grand if we wanted to spend it on that. So I think we're still going to just stick to what we have here. We're probably going to take the cat food. Honestly, it's going to be six cars of it. 240 tons, nothing too bad. Nothing DH4 can't handle. And to accept it, you just throw it into this thing. But no, 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 we're not going to do that yet. Have a look here at the freight haul delivery order FH29. I'm going to hit tab and put that in my inventory. Uh, so I have it on my person. So we're going to be looking for that job and I'll show you exactly how we do that. By the way, if you ever lose anything in the game, it will turn up in the lost and found. As you can see, here's a bunch of my old stuff that uh, just kind of accidentally got thrown to the side. Uh, you can see there, congratulations, you have the DH4, etc, etc. So if you're missing something in the game, chances are it'll 
pop up here. And this is our load right here. You can see there is cat food, 29,000 kilograms right there on board this one. And uh, there you go, FH29. Looking at the freight order right there, looks like it is the same. So it's this whole line right here we're going to be picking up. So all we have to do is just move our locomotive down this way, turn around, come back down this line, hook up, get ready for it, pull it up a little bit, and then go inside and start the job. So we're back in the DH4. We're going to go ahead and fire it all up once again, and uh, we're going to get underway. Good thing that you can see a little bit of the rain here on the windscreen. If we just go ahead and turn the wipers on, look, it actually moves that water out of the way. Really cool and immersive for sure. Let's get our lights on here. Uh, reverse lights are set, and uh, we'll actually go ahead and turn the little panel lights on for now. Release this guy here. We're going to close the door so it's not extremely loud, and we are going to go ahead and put the reverser forward, release the locomotive brake, and start rolling towards the end here, which we're going to go up here, and I'm going to show you how we can change the rails to move where we need to to pick up that. So looking out the back, we can see we need to go into the rail on the left-hand side for C3 outbound is the line. So it's just a matter of these guys right here. You open up your comms radio panel, and then you can go ahead and change them like this. Really cool that you can do that. So we want to go to the left here and then to the right. So that's exactly what we are going to do. And we will make sure that this next one has us going to the left, which it does. And all we have to do is reverse. So let's go ahead and add the brake. Let it come to a stop. And then we'll put the reverser into that. Release the brake and watch here. Wait for the brake pipe to go to zero or the, uh, the independent brake to go to zero. And then that's you know what we have in the actual pipe itself. And we start the reverse procedure here. A couple hits of the horn there. And now we should back right up into it. So. You can damage cars, you can derail. There's so much destruction you can actually uh, do in the game that, you know, if you want to make money at this, you're going to have to, um, you know, be careful about everything you're doing, including how quickly we slam into the cars so we don't damage them before we pick them up and take them where we're going. You know, you're going to have to pay for the damages on everything, and there's so much costs involved. It's a very challenging game for that reason. So as we're getting closer to this, you can either, you know, give a little bit of the uh, independent brake there, about a bar there, back it off, and you start slowing down even more. Or you can just use the old handbrake right here and uh, kind of gauge how quickly you want to come in here to this car itself. Put a little bit more brake on. I want to have like a crawling bit about right there actually isn't bad. Open this up. You can hop on out, and we'll watch this thing come down here and run into this so we can couple it all up. We know we have the brake on, so we don't have to worry about it, you know, taking off on us here. And here she comes right there. Bam, just like that. Come down here just like we did before. Couple it up. And there we go. Oop, almost do it. There we go. All right, and release the handbrake on that. You always have to make sure you have at least one handbrake on here set when you drop off, by the way. So that thing's pretty much ready to go on out to the harbor, and that's what we're going to do. So we have the lights on. Everything's good. We just need to come over here and get the job going. So we bring this delivery order in here, and we are going to insert it right here, and you get a job little booklet here, and we can open it up. Here you go. And it tells you step one, couple at C3 outbound, which we already did. We saved time by doing that. And we can double check all those are the correct cars. Uh, and basically what I do for my uh, safety and, uh, you know, not go taking the wrong thing where it needs to go. You see CFF 268. We see it right there as the first car in line. So we know that's what it is. We need to go to Harbor in town, and we're going to be taking that to uh, E8 inbound track at the harbor so that's all we have to do you can always uh, hop up in there by hitting f like that close our door here and release our handbrake make sure it wasn't set yep it's all good to go there forward on the reverser now and we're pretty much ready to go everything's released a little bit of power here to start rolling and we are off to the races just like that that's all it takes you can hit x to sit down if you want to kind of as a little bit of a 
you know, limited visibility out of the front. So I like to kind of stand where I'm operating the train. And yep, we're confirming everything is moving as it should be. Nothing's dragging back there. If you have that brake on there, you're just going to drag those wheels and damage them, which you do not want to do. We open up the world map here. You can see I'm in realistic mode, so I don't have my little uh, tick on there that shows you where you're actually at. We're at the FF, the blue one at the top. And we're going northbound out of there and we're going to make the loop. We're going to take the, the whole loop, which is a little bit of an incline and then down and around to the south over GF there. And that is an entire downhill run into the harbor. And the harbor is at the very bottom in purple, as you can see right there. Add a little bit more power here. As the rain is starting to let up a little bit here, we can remove those wipers as we expected it to be the case. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is that in realistic mode, uh, they remove your key bindings. So that really kind of sucks. I like to have a key binding for my horn. They make you do everything manually, you know, and it just, it's not the same because you have to, uh, you know, be looking out the front to be safe. So 30 is the kilometers. That's a lot, 30 kilometers an hour. But we have an upgrade, we have an uphill there. So the grade goes up by 1.5. We're at 20 now. We're gonna give a little bit more power here. And that's just the recommended speed for the curve, basically. And if we were in non-realistic mode, you can fly around with a camera and set up cool rail fanning shots, which is really neat. However, I'm showing you the full realistic mode of this sim. Since they're marketing as a simulator, I'm showing you what you can, you know, can expect if you want to run it as hard as you do. Get a little cabin fan, you can turn that on, keep the air flowing in here. And we're keeping an eye on that oil temp as it's starting to climb. Now, what's really cool with the big radiator on the front of these things, when we start getting that air moving through the front, it's going to keep that engine cool. And we have a downgrade here at uh, five. So we need a little bit more power here. Just get up to the five. Just add a zero to it. 50 kilometers an hour is going to be the speed limit in this section. However, it will catch you out quite a bit. This is Derail Valley for a reason. It's extremely challenging to manage the train speeds and these curves as you go along your route. So keep that in mind when you're first starting out. There's great tutorials at the very beginning. Um, so if you're brand new to all of this, don't worry if it looks to be too convoluted right out of the gate. You'll be just fine over time. Let's go ahead and uh, show you what the station map looks like here. This is where we just were. You see that's how everything was laid out. Pretty darn cool. We have a 30 and we have a plus two here. So I'm just going to pull out the power just a little bit here. We're not getting that much speed to keep it, uh, you know, where it's at. So let's bring it back a little bit more. And we can use, you know, the train brake or we can use dynamic braking. Uh, keep in mind, you know, when the rails are wet, you can slide very easily, actually. So that is the thing to keep in mind. So we're going to come out here. We're going to stay to the left all the way through. And you'll see the junctions as we cut closer to them. But all in all, just I've been losing so much time in this game. I absolutely love it. A little bit more power here. And that's your wheel slip indicator right there. If it turns yellow, you would know you were getting that. And then you just turn the sand on to get the grip. Another thing they added, which I'm not going to demonstrate right now, but you could jump in that water and actually swim. So if you lost items in there, you can jump down there and, and check it all out. Pretty cool. So we have a junction in 0.7 kilometers. 30 through here right now, a little bit more power as we're climbing this hill. You know, time is money and uh, we don't want to dilly dally. So we got to make sure that the Y is selected to the left on this one. You hear the change in sound as we go into a tunnel. Pretty cool. there you hear the change in sound very cool how that works so we're getting back up to 30 right now bring back the power a little bit here and we'll wait to see what the next sign says so we know this curve right here was a recommended speed of 30 
kilometers an hour. So you can go a little faster. You can get away with five to 10 over, but don't make it a habit if you don't want to derail. <laughs> a little bit more power coming in here. You can see that oil temp rising when we threw it back like that, but we are on a bit of a grade here and we're just trying to keep speed up. And as that gets closer to the yellow, we're going to get that blue light. So we're okay, optimal engine temp or oil temp. And if it goes into the red, you're going to get a bell that'll go off. And it's like, hey, it's getting hot. So you can blow the engines. You can do all sorts of damage to everything. Keep that in mind. All right, here's the junction right there. And you can see right there, it is set to the left. And, you know, if we opened up our comms, little radio here, it's set to the left. It's 40 through there. So we're right now about 25 kilometers an hour. So nothing too crazy here. And we are going to have that grade I was talking about there, about a 0.9 grade up. Add a little bit of power here. And you're just trying to manage your speed with the actual radiator doing its job without overheating everything. So by that shot, you can see that I changed over to standard mode so we can have an outside view and I'll show you some more stuff uh, that it allows you to do in standard mode rather than realistic mode. That way we can get some cool rail fanning shots and things like that. 90 section through here. Yeah, we're doing fine. Just fine right now. And uh, opening up the map, first of all, you can see that triangle on the map moving in the top right corner. That is us and where our location is compared to the harbor, which is way down there. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna lose the time bonus on doing this whole thing. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'll take the hit just to show you more of what you can do. Hitting uh, F2 will open the new outside camera view. Very cool that we now have this ability to look around the train. So if you want a more standard approach instead of you know straight realism of just being stuck in the cab, you can go to the outside view and, and do all that. Another cool thing you can do is hit F4 and boom, we have all the controls of the trains right here as we see fit. So we can add a little train brake we want to, take it out, add more throttle, take it out, reverser, etc. All sorts of stuff. Turn on uh, the starter, all that stuff. This, you know, those are your circuit breakers there. And uh, hit the bell. Very loud. Uh, so that's what you can do with the F4. F3 just puts you into the free cam mode so you can fly around like I did with that rail fanning shot there. And uh, we can set up over here and watch the train go whizzing by. And I can hit the uh, plus key for my on the numpad for the horn. So looking at the map, we can see we have a right turn coming up here. So we'll get ready for that. There's the junction sign right there, 0.2 kilometers to it. And we need to go to the right so we can go to the south. So comms radio, zoom in. You can see right there, it's already set up for it. And look at that sign right there saying 40 around the corner. We're going to be just fine on that. Keeping the speed up right now. And then once we start going south, we'll start going downhill, which is really, really cool. You see right here, that's that blue and white right there. That means that it's a flat track. So we'll pull our power back to about right there. We were running there pretty hot right there. That's okay. And really neat, you're getting to see just all the different, you know, uh, things that are in this game. It, it's, it's really jam-packed full of stuff to do. And, uh, you know, being in VR, it's a total different experience. Like, VR is incredible in this game. I absolutely love it. Yep, we see right there, negative 1.9, 30 through here. So let's be ready for that. So we can use our dynamic brake if we want. 
And the reason why it says 30 is because we're going to have a corner up here that's sharper than you think it is. And to prevent a derail, add a little bit of train brake there. You can see that brake pipe pressure there, about 4.1 bars there. And we can see it's managing the speed now, coming down to about 30. Once we get to a 30 for this corner right here, we're going to be careful. Make sure we don't kill ourselves. There we go. Release that. And that's pretty much how you manage the train going down the hill, using the dynamic brake, using everything else, you know. You hear the different sounds whenever you're using it all. It's it's so cool. A beautiful look at the valley out there to the right as we are making our sweeping turn now to the left after this tunnel and we'll be on the southbound line that takes us directly into the harbor and looking at our map we can see where we're at still trucking southbound towards the harbor right now and i'm gonna let you know at the end of the video we'll go into sandbox mode and i will show you what a derailment looks like so you can see uh so don't worry we're not going to show derail valley without showing a derail as we're making our way to the harbor you can see we're going to be coming in from the east uh it's gonna be 53 here downhill so let's go ahead and kill the power here for now add a little bit of dynamic braking see that fog very cool volumetric lighting and stuff uh with the station map we're coming in from the east and we know we're going to e8 inbound so we're gonna go to the right once we come in and just go straight into the e uh section of the harbor so we know that that'll be the case we move our dynamic brake here as we're slowing down for the corner and now we have a game plan in mind so hopefully we won't be too late It is getting foggy, isn't it? Sure is. And look at that. We got the uh, rain now coming down pretty good. So the wipers are going to come on to about medium there. Going to wipe that away. Maintaining our speed coming through this section here. This is all downhill. So this is a lot of a lot of train management right now to make sure we don't have a derailment. And lose all our money and our whole run we're doing here. So just got to stay on top of it. We got a junction coming up here in 0.5 kilometers we're in a 40 zone here as we are starting to move now into the harbor itself i'm gonna slow down even more i'm gonna turn this cabin light on so you can see a little bit of what we got going on here there's the world map and there we are I'm gonna remove that train break out of there as we're slowing down to 40 now and we want to go to the right to go into the actual harbor so i'll turn that cabin light off again just so we can see a little bit better here I'm actually turning these lights down to normal as that fog isn't helping the situation at all. Add a little bit more of the brake. There we go. And we'll be ready for this. A little bit of dynamic braking too. Uh, get our comms radio ready to go. Make sure it's going to be to the right, which it is. See how fast that thing came up? That's all right. There we go. Release you. Release you. And if we wanted to be safe, we'd turn that bell on as we come in. Oh, we needed to go to the right. We needed to go to the right. All right. See how fast those things come up? It doesn't take much time at all, does it? It really doesn't. As you can see right there, this is where we wanted to go. Right into there all the way over to, I believe, 8 inbound. is going to be just over there, actually. Let's see. So let's go ahead and put the reverser back where it was. Release you. Add some power in here. The cabin light on so you can see what we're doing. A little bit more power here. We're just going to back up right past that guy and go to the right. There's the wheel slip. Turn the sander on. You hear the sand shooting out of there. Turn that guy off. And we need to go to the right. So turn the sander off. Gonna kill you. And we'll get the comms radio out. There we go to the right. Perfect. Add that train brake back in here. Tom's radio, boom, there we go. That's the direction we want to go. Thank you very much. All right, that's all released forward on the reverser. A little bit of power here. And now we are headed into the right spot here on the station map. To the right, coming in from the east, 
and then uh, E right in on the left. So we'll come in a little bit further here. We'll hop out and we'll make sure that we have everything set up where it needs to be as we're dealing with the weather right now. So let's go ahead and remove that. And I will show you how fast you can dash in standard mode. We'll go ahead and add the train brake. Get that sucker going. You hit F just to pop out if you want to. And look at the sparks coming out of there. Very cool. All that is modeled. And you hit F, this is how fast you can dash in standard mode. You see the big difference there? So look at the fog just rolled in like crazy. That's E, seven outbound. We want E, eight inbound. According to the order here, E, eight inbound is right there. So just back up a little bit here and you can see which everything, you know, which ones are all set up. You need to go into there. We need to go to the left on this one right here, but man, the lighting, it just looks so good. It looks really good. You see how that all changes out there. And this one here needs to go to the left as well. That should be it though. I need to get myself that lantern. I haven't bought the lantern yet. So man, look at the fog. Really, really creeped in on us. And you can just see that volumetric lighting there. Looks so amazing. So we can just hit F from a far distance like that to to get back in the train, which is really nice. Turn the cabin light on for now. And a little bit of power here. A little bit more power. Just alert people that we're moving forward here into the yard. And we just go straight to eight inbound and we're pretty much done on the run. You can see this is a massive, massive rail yard. Uh, and this is just scratching the surface of just how big it is. But look at that lighting, man. It looks so, so, so good. So this comes down to the end here. Pretty much we're going to be even with these orange containers. And then the station itself is just straight out in front of us. All righty. That's good to go. Set that break there. Set you. Open you up. And we'll decouple from back here. First things first, got to put the handbrake on. Got to have at least one of them, like I said. Like that. And to decouple just everything opposite of how we originally set everything up. Brake lines there. Unleash that. And pull you away from there. There we go. And it's decoupled just like that. So to prevent any more fees occurring here, we're going to make sure everything's set here. Release you. Keep that on there for now, and we are going to go ahead and wait for that brake pipe to come. There we go. Down like that. Start uh, Fuel cutoff goes to the off position. Then we go off, off, off. And this guy goes to the off, off position like that. And we can set that handbrake like we did already. And that's pretty much it. Now we just need to go to the actual station itself. Close you. So that was a fun run for sure. So we just dashed this way. And into the station office we go. We're going to grab our little job here that we had. And we just validate it. That's all you have to do. Boom. It's in there. And check it out. We got a complete. We're going to get a beep right there just for the money. Throw that on the ground for now. We'll take our money. 23 grand we made on that run. Absolutely. We'll take that. There you go. Elapsed time, 60 minutes. Bonus time was 117. We made that no problem. There you go. So it, it didn't matter. I didn't lose any time whenever I changed up the, uh, the things. But there you go. That's what we have. Well done. No damage was made to the derail valley property or the environment. Keep it up. Chuck that in the trash like that. And that is what it's like to do a job. Like I said, you know, you can do shunting jobs and things like that, which is just essentially getting everything prepped. You have to take, you know, different uh, cars apart. You have to load them, unload them. There's so many cool things you can do with that. Maybe that's for another time. Look at that weather forecast, man. Uh, very cool that we got to see the volumetric lighting. We got to see the fog move in. We got to see the whole dynamic weather system at its uh, at its peak today for sure. So very cool indeed. Let's check out sandbox mode. So clicking on sessions, you have sandbox right here and we just hit start on sandbox. And welcome to sandbox mode. This is the DE2. This is the one you're going to start out with in the tutorial right there. However, there are other locomotives for sure. I'll show you those a little bit later on. So in sandbox mode, they give you everything. You have a flashlight lantern. You have the uh, remote so you can actually remotely control uh, different uh, shunters or like the DE2 or different uh, locomotives like that. You can't with the DE6, but 
You can with the others. Very cool tool to have when you're doing shunting work. Uh, lighter shovel. Shovel you use for the steam engines. Yes, there are steam engines in the game. Pretty darn cool. And here is the steam train. You have to have an S2A2 license to operate it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. Very cool. And uh, it's got a full steam engine simulation happening here so we'll have to do that eventually once i get that unlocked all right let's do a full send forward and just see what happens full reverser throttle coming up there we go close the door and now we're gonna be pulling these things straight out this direction and i know there's a fast section out there so it shouldn't take very long for us on this flat to get up to speed and see a derail speed up that's all that matters right now i'm gonna get all the way on the line a little bit more power here as much speed as i possibly can in this thing with all of that behind us this is gonna be a disaster for sure already at 70 bring it back a little bit i just don't want to blow the engine up before we get to derail <laughs> and we're in a 70 zone here getting closer to 80 kilometers an hour and then it opens up in this long stretch here and then looking on the world map, we have that tight turn to the right. So that's where we're going to expect to derail this thing at. Yeah, we're just now at 80. Let's see if we can make the corner at uh, 10 over. I think it'll be fine. I don't think we're going to have a derail here. It's getting close, though. You can see it. Definitely getting close. Doing about 85 kilometers an hour, pushing towards the 90 mark. Come on, dump that throttle in there. Yeah, it's 90 section through here, and then it's going to be just calamity at the end. That curve to the right is pretty sharp. We saw glowing back there already starting to happen. We have this thing completely buried in the throttle right now, and we're getting close to the turn. Here it comes. Let's see if it'll make it. I don't think it's going to make this corner, but we'll see what happens. You gonna make that corner there? Ooh, it's trying to derail. There it goes. Just like that. <laughs> Into the water, too. Oh, man. That thing came apart big time. And now it's releasing all of that. Look at that. And we're in underwater. There is the engine right there the locomotive and then you can see that it goes all the way up to there man holy moly that was a heck of a derail and these things are still glowing look at that those are the brakes just absolutely glowing from that nonsense okay that was awesome all right we have a train full send this direction right now let's make sure it's going to smash right into those so we need all left hand side now i'm expecting this thing to derail before it even gets close to making that left hand turn at these speeds so yeah this is going to be interesting for sure because that thing is just full send right now oh my lord look at that yep and it's getting closer the true question is will it make this turn right here i just don't think it's going to oh here it comes it does not care it's got all this nonsense on board and it is full bore into this yard right now. There it goes. Oh, it's going to make the turn. Oh, it made the turn. All right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Boom. Oh, not too bad. Hang on there. What? I was expecting it to be a lot worse than that. Whoa. Oh, it derailed. It's not going to make it, is it? It's going to hit these instead. What? Oh, man. All right, now we damage this tank. Let's go ahead and get our uh, our lighter out here, and we're going to light the sucker. Oh, my God, just like that. All right, cool. Back on out, and watch the fireworks here. I was going to show you the explosions in the game. There it goes. <laughs> we got methane, and we've got gasoline and oil. You name it tons oh those things went flying dude so you can have a lot of fun in sandbox mode as you can see we're 
now just destroying the entire rail yard. There you go, folks. Well, that is Derail Valley Simulator. And the rock and red glare. Uh, fantastic game. I've been having a ton of fun with it. Let me know if you want to see more of it, especially when we get into the steam engine stuff. But uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take care.